The story we're going to cover this week comes immediately after the whole aftermath of David and Bathsheba, the sin that David has by sleeping with Bathsheba, murdering her husband, and the consequence for David's decision to do that, God says to him that the sword will never depart from your house. And so we start to see some things happen immediately, how there's conflict and strife in David's house from the time immediately following those events. First of all, we see how David is going to be passive through all of these stories. He's not going to be an active participant, but simply allowing the events to happen right in front of him. Uh, what we see is that we kind of see that he's kind of lost his confidence as a leader. First of all, we see his son, Amnon, rape his half-sister, Tamar, and her brother, Absalom, then murders Amnon a couple of years later. And we see that David has lost complete control of his family. And David doesn't follow through on any of the consequences that are laid out in the Old Testament for each one of those acts. First of all, he doesn't have any justice brought on his son for raping his sister. Second of all, he doesn't exonerate his daughter Tamar uh, because she was not a willing participant in incest, but she was raped, and so he didn't clear her name. And then third, he doesn't bring any consequences or judgment on his son Absalom for his murder of his brother. And so what we see from David now is that he is being passive, not just in his parenting, but his, in his leadership as the king in general. And there are major consequences for that passivity. Check this out where, from, uh, from the story in 2 Samuel 13, 21 through 22. When King David heard all this, he was furious. And Absalom never said a word to Amnon, either good or bad. He hated Amnon because he had disgraced his sister, Tamar. You see, David has this furious reaction over what all of these events occurred, but David did nothing about it. And so David's anger rings somewhat hollow because of the fact that he doesn't actually address the situation. He just gets angry about them. And so this is what we need to discuss as the people of God is how does our passivity affect others? How do we act in situation, passively in situations that could affect others. So let's, add, let's discuss this in our community groups. First question, how have you seen passivity neg negatively impact your life in some way? And then what are some ways to move past passivity and be more proactive in your life?